What's going on everyone? Welcome back to a new video. My name is of course Paul. Now, a video I got asked to do a while ago and I just thought I've already done one in 2017. I may as well wait till the start of 2018. Now we're a few months in. So I thought why not bring you the video now of what's on my iPhone 10. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Here's the iPhone screen. Here's the iPhone 10. Let's jump into what's on my iPhone 10. Jumping straight into it, as you can see on the home screen, I've got my messages folder, the FaceTime folder, and the WhatsApp folder. Now they stay at the top of the screen because that's easily accessible for me to jump straight in, as well as the camera app. I'm always in the camera app anyway. As you guys know, I take pictures all the time. And every now and again, I will use the iPhone for that. So I like having the camera app exactly where it is. Next up, I've got my navigation folder. Now Google Maps is my go-to. I have got Apple Maps in there. As I've noticed Apple Maps has got better and better over time. And also Waze. Waze is becoming my top navigation app to use. And I'm also excited because the possibility of a new car is getting closer. The car I'm looking at will support Waze Control. So I'm really excited about that one. The calendar app, I'm in there a lot. That's the calendar app, but it's just a stock calendar app I use. My photos, where I go in, I can see what I've taken, what I've airdropped to my phone, what I need to edit, all kinds of stuff like that. The weather app, self-explanatory, clock, I use my me, me alarm. We've got the mail app, the wallet app, which has got me, me cards and stuff like that. The notes app, I'm always in the notes app. I'm making notes on new videos, I'm making notes on different accounts I've got, I'm making notes on what I want to do, I'm making notes on ideas for videos, basically, you know, me jotting something down that I've thought about, like, oh, I want to go and shoot B-roll in this location, I'll jot it down in the notes app, so I've got it there, and I know what I need to look at. The Apple Watch app, I have got an Apple Watch, however, I haven't been wearing it lately, I've been just opting for my normal Nixon watches. In the extras folder, next to that, I've got all the stock Apple apps that came on the phone, that I tend to use, but I don't want to get rid of, for, like, I've got rid of a few, but... There's ones in there I don't want to get rid of. Podcasts app. Now, I'm constantly listen to, listening to podcasts, as well as trying to make me own. I'm always in there. I'll give you a quick thing of who I'm currently listening to, podcast-wise. Next up, I've got a YouTube folder. And what I keep in the YouTube folder is, of course, the YouTube app. Again, self-explanatory. YouTube Studio allows me to see all my notifications from you guys. Check the stats on a video. Even though I don't really do that no more anyway, I'll just use it to reply. To you guys sub count again is to just keep track of how many subs i'm currently at and then adsense which is obviously to see my revenue but not from youtube from the actual websites that i've got so that's what i use for that next we've got the virgin atlantic app virgin atlantic is who i fly with when i'm flying over to orlando virgin atlantic is the one i use i've got a load of points with them and i may need to use them for a trip coming up soon q park rewards now q car park is in liverpool one now that's where I park my car when I go into town. I won't. I, I don't know what it is. I don't like leaving my car on the street, etc. I'd sooner park it away, pay for the parking, and I know that it's safe and secure. Apple Store, self-explanatory. Apple Support, again, self-explanatory. iTunes Store, the only reason I've got the iTunes Store is because I've got Netflix. And I've opted to pay via iTunes so I needed to authorise stuff through the through the iTunes store. App Store again self explanatory and of course settings. The bottom dock I'm currently using Dialer, the Gmail app for all my Gmail for the business and stuff like that. Safari and of course Instagram where I've currently got five accounts. You can find all of my social media accounts linked down below. Hopping over to the next page I keep the contacts out of a folder and just sitting in the top corner. That's where I've always had it on every phone and I just feel happier with it there. So I always stay just there with it. Next up I've got a business folder. Now what I keep in the business folder is WordPress, Evernote, which I don't really use all that much. It can actually go. See some of these apps I probably don't use on a daily basis. I have got two Flickr accounts. Blog Loving, again is for the blog. Bitly to shorten those links down. Genius Scan allows me to scan documents and have them on my phone to email off to clients or whoever I need to email to. Famebit is when you get a certain subscriber count or followers 
on social media and YouTube etc and you can use that to find sponsored content so I haven't got there yet but that's always been on my phone it's been on my phone since I started YouTube Fiverr is a great app I've got a dedicated video about Fiverr going live in a couple of weeks so make sure you stay tuned for that one Dropbox speed test for when I go to the hotel and I need to check the internet speed Skype for those more important business calls when you can't use FaceTime Publish allows me to publish a tweet at a select time. Crowdfire, I used to use Crowdfire a lot, check stats, I don't really use that anymore. Smilefinger, no idea what that is, <laughs> never used it. One password to store all my passwords. Scanbot, again another scanner. Watermark to watermark photos when I'm not on my computer. Slack, again I haven't really used it. Google Keep, again is a great notes app as it syncs across all devices so I can sync this from this device to my Android device and keep it going. Patreon, I have got a Patreon account. If you want to go and check it out, it's linked down below. Forms, again, it's just forms. Microsoft Word, Google Drive, Adobe Fill and Sign, for when I need to sign contracts, etc. Or, you know, there's been some deals lately that I've had to do, and I've needed to sign some documents. Snapwire, I haven't used. Adobe Acrobat, I haven't used. And Code, was when I was looking into getting into coding to see if I could make my own app but I never really fully got into it again there's just not enough time files obviously syncs through all your computers and your other phones and I iPad and stuff like that Google Calendar I do use it on my Android phone and this is able to sync through this phone as well so I know what's on the Google Calendar so I can keep track of it right here as well invoice to go is obviously when I can invoice clients when they've done when I've done work for them and I can just invoice them and obviously get paid etc self-employed as you know, I went self-employed not so long ago. I do still have a full-time job, but I went self-employed not so long ago. Started my own businesses up properly, the way it's meant to be done. I use self-employed as a bit of a guide to guide me through the business steps. In course, Google Translate, so I can translate stuff that comes through that's from China or Singapore, etc. Wherever it's come from, I can translate it through that app. Next, obviously, is a finance folder. I won't go into that. I've got clear score which allows me to check my credit score and then all my banking apps. I do have a dedicated Florida app. As you know, I currently own Orlando Tourist. Now, Orlando Tourist deals with tourism information and new stuff that's coming out. So if you want to check that out, again, links in the description down below. But what I keep on the phone, Universal Florida app. That's a great app for checking ride times. And obviously, I've got my accounts and my tickets linked through that account. Disney World app, again, syncs all my tickets up. Perfect, as well as cards and stores it to the magic band. The SeaWorld app, the SunPass app, which is my transponder for going through the toll roads in Orlando. Some apps on here that I haven't used for a long time. But the Amway Center, which is a big like concert venue and sports venue. We went to the basketball game in December. The Crown Plaza Orlando app, as you know, that's where I stay. Crown Plaza Orlando Universal. Absolutely superb, stayed there for years. Can't recommend them. Enough. Got the IHG app because that's where I keep track of all my points when I stay in the Crown Plaza. Next, I've got the IAPA Expos app. Now, I've been at IAPA now for the last four years running. Uber Eats for while I'm in Orlando, Domino's for while I'm also in Orlando. I can order from both of those to the hotel. Holiday Pirates to check flights, etc. Dial a flight, that's the, pay that's the people that I currently use at the moment. Uber, in case I don't have the car or we're going out for the night, I'll just order an Uber to take us back to the hotel. E-bookers again for flight, Airbnb, in case I'm ever deciding to go somewhere else or I'm going there on or I'm going there for like a working trip, etc. I can just book an Airbnb rather than book a hotel. Sometimes it works out a little bit cheaper. Lyft, same as Uber. I've got the Orlando MCO app, which allows me to check wait times, etc. and current status for flights. The Manchester Airport app also allows me to do the same, but also allows me to book a security feature which allows me to go through security check-in a little bit quicker and then travel guides just in case I'm ever, I'm ever somewhere that I don't know I can open travel guides and find somewhere cool to go and eat something to go and see etc you know things different things that you can go and find okay jumping into the lifestyle folder I've currently got eBay Amazon Big Day got IMDB to look at new movies trailers new TV shows that are coming out Shazam in case I hear a song when I'm out and about just click Shazam my car check, can check car details in case I'm looking at a different car. I can just go on, check the reg, check its history and stuff like that. Netflix, I've recently just got a Netflix account and loving it so far, which is 
sorry, $5.99. VLC, in case there's something that I want to watch and I can't use the iPhone to watch it, transfer it to VLC. Google Home allows me to control all the Google products I've got in the house. Next up, I'm really into NFL. When I say I'm into NFL, I actually support the Seahawks. I have done for a while. I do like the Seahawks. I follow the Seahawks and I do watch NFL when it's on the TV, etc. And I can use this to keep like track of the scores, live scores, and I can see different plays from different games. NFL Fantasy, I got into it last year and I haven't done it this year. I probably will do it again. NFL Fantasy, build your own fantasy team, self-explanatory. SoundCloud for finding, finding music for these videos. Nike Run and Under Armour map my run. Now, I do want to get back into running. Again, something I've done last year and I do want to do it again this year. Kindle, again, in case I fancy a book, I can just read it while I'm on the aeroplane. And away we go. Got me photography folder, which the top apps that I use are at the top here. And there is another app a bit further in. Camera Plus, I swear by it. Fonto, in case you want to add some text to a photo or something stylish. Lens distortions, absolutely fantastic app. So glad I found it last year. Color Splash, Cameo, Photo Bucket. I had years ago to store photos, etc. Don't really tend to use it. The GoPro app, I've got two GoPros at the moment, there is going to be a third coming soon. Vimeo, again, is for videos. Play Memories Mobile is for the Sony RX100 Mark IV camera that I've got. Photo collage, I haven't really used it just to get to put pictures together. Same as Pick Frame next to it. Light meter, Canon Camera Connect, so I can connect to this camera. However, I don't tend to use it all that often as it's only when you're transferring photos. I won't use it for the live feed, it's a bit laggy now and again. 500px I used it a couple of years ago again I haven't really used it this year I may get rid of it. Litex I haven't used. Tweegram. Auto swap again I haven't used for a while. Cinemagraph I wanted to get into but it seems like a lot of hard work to make. I'll try and make one and obviously see how I get on. Adobe Sketch, self-explanatory it's just a sketch but I downloaded it for the iPad and it's transferred to the phone. Now Lightroom. Lightroom is my go-to editor of choice whether it's mobile or laptop. When I'm on the Mac, it's currently Lightroom. I will switch between Lightroom and Camera Plus for different photos, for depending on what I need. You've got Photoshop Mix. Video Crop is just a crop video. I'm fused, I haven't used neither, which is a bit, it's a bit strange, the app I've got on my phone that I've never used. I'm probably gonna start going through all this and looking to get rid of some apps off the phone. Shopping, I've currently, I've currently got JD. Argos, Ikea, Nando's of course, Cineworld, Odeon, for when I want to open the pictures, Etsy, Parcel, I want, to, I want to switch the deliveries but I don't want to pay the 4 99 just yet, Auto Trader, when I'm looking at cars, Voucher Codes and Groupon, Meerkat Movies, I bought me car insurance through Compare the Market and I get Meerkat Movies with Ticketmaster in case I'm looking for concert tickets, Tesco Club Card, Fantasy. Goat size is just like JD for trainers, clothing, etc. Size previews allows you to go in, and if you're ever doing a Yeezy raffle, you'll be first to be notified through size previews. My social folder I've got Facebook. I don't use Facebook an awful lot, I only use it for the likes of cars and coffee and uh, to promote videos, etc. Twitter I've had Twitter for a long time. If you want to follow me again, all links linked down below. Facebook pages, I've got a few Facebook pages too, again they're all down below. Snapchat, now that's a tricky one isn't it? <laughs> now I am still using Snapchat. LinkedIn, been using that a lot for Orlando Tourist. Facebook Messenger. Hangouts as well, I've got that on my Android phone, I can switch between the two. Periscope for those live videos. Pinterest, I've been using that a lot lately for ideas for the room and for video stuff. Bitmoji, I created my own Bitmoji, that's for Snapchat. Alien Blue is the Reddit client. Foursquare to check in, that was years ago, I haven't used it since. And Meetup, I've just recently downloaded Meetup and logged in. So, jumping in now, I've got apps here on the, on the screen that are just there because I've recently downloaded them. So I've got the DJI Go app, that's for me Osmo Mobile. Anchor, again, it's because I want to start doing podcasts and I'm thinking about launching it through Anchor. Front row is a video coming very, very soon. It's not on the app, but it's an actual front row camera. Over is a photo editor for you to basically put some stuff over photos. NBA, I do follow the NBA. I follow the Orlando Magic. 
and the LA Lakers. Expensify allows you to keep hold of expenses that you may have incurred for your business. The Solomondron app, app in the air is a really cool app that I used in December when the wife was coming over from here in the UK to Orlando. Google Photos again because I've got the Android phone it syncs the photos over. The Orlando magic. Now we've had a bit of a, uh, a rough season. Spotify I have got a free account. I may upgrade to the premium. I'm not too sure just yet. Starbucks is from when I'm in the States. Typerama again is another one like Fonto where you can add text over a photo. Rental cars is a one I used to use a while ago when I was looking for rental cars and I downloaded it again just to check prices. Tile, I've got two tiles. I've got the old tile and I've got the new tile sport. One is on my car keys and one is in my bag, in my wallet, so I can find it in case I lose it. One tap receipts, IKEA place is the augmented reality of if I wanted to put a table here, I could find the table on IKEA and use the camera and put the table right here to see what it would look like. iTunes Connect, you may be thinking what's that? Well, because I'm making a podcast, you'd have to obviously ask Apple and other people, you know, whether you can launch it through their platform, etc. And iTunes Connect allows you to do that. Picks on fire, Adidas confirmed, Tesco Bank is not clothing, it's just a bank and a Food booking, again, is another food app, which isn't actually for over in the States this time, this is actually for here. Facebook creator, Bump, and ASOS. Y-O-O-X, sneakers app, top shop, Urban Outfitters is all for clothing and then the headphones one that you're seeing at the bottom there is I've just bought a new pair of Sony headphones. There's a video coming on that at the end of this week so stay tuned for that. It's on the Sony WH-1000M2s. So make sure you stay tuned for that video that's going to be going live at the end of this week. And that's going to do it guys. As I said, the other side of what I've got is going to be coming in a video very soon. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. Also as well, jumping over to the end page. Widget wise, I'll just go through it from here rather than putting it on the screen next to me. This is big day. Allows me to see how many days I've got left until an upcoming event. Sub count, we went into the app before and obviously I can see what subs I've got through the widget. Ways, I can set for home, work and another destination and it'll tell me how long I've got till I get to that destination. I've got the weather, so I can see what the weather is when in various places and then there is the podcast one where it's just a quick tap and you're straight into the whatever you're listening to. This is my wallpaper I show you currently, it's just the inside of the iPhone 10. It fits perfectly and this is exactly what it looks like inside. The wallpaper of choice that I've been using for the longest time ever, even on the iPhone 7 Plus. It basically gives you the time in the top corner. It tells you control center, notification center. It just gives you all like a brief thing of what each one is. Spotlight, yeah, you can swipe down from the middle. And then you've got your widgets if you swipe that way. Your next page preview that way. And then all the bottom bit here says background apps, app switcher and reachability and shows you how to do it but guys this video has gone on long enough i thought it would do make sure you stay tuned there's a lot of videos coming up as i said to you i've got the sony video the front row video i've got the what's on my essential phone video which is the android phone i may switch to the note 8 but i don't know whether that'll come before we put out the new video with the essential phone a lot of other videos coming up guys if you enjoyed this please drop a like on this video for me subscribe if you're new to the channel I truly appreciate it. If this wasn't for you and you're waiting for the Android one, let me know in the comments down below. If there's any apps you know of that I should be looking at right now, let me know in the comments. I'm going to go through my phone I'm going to delete some of those apps off my phone. And also be sure to stay tuned for that video on what's on the other screen. That's coming very soon. It's something I haven't done before and it's not something that I normally do with my phones neither. It's definitely something new for me. But thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone. See you all later.